Hey what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2 and today I'm going to be giving you part 4 of what if Naruto was banished from Kanoha and made them regret it. Remember to get this one to 100 like as usual, share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also guys don't forget to go ahead and check out the other episodes that I posted today. What if Naruto was the demigod of fire over in Anime King 3 and enjoy that guys. And also I posted a brand new episode of What If Naruto Was, a half Uchiha with a god like Yin Yang ability. So go ahead and enjoy that as well guys. And check out the brand new movie over on Anime Prince. Remember if you're new, yes I indeed have 4 channels which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead, check them out and enjoy. So without further ado or wasting more time, what do you see we jump right into this brand new episode begin now guys. So the last part we left off, two weeks has passed by in those two weeks, Naruto had become an official shinobi of the sun, not to mention he had met up with Chiyo on several occasions and he was also training as well. Seeing that he was currently on the reserves, Naruto was trained to get his skills back up the snuff as he was practicing and working out, getting faster, getting his strength back up. It's been a long time since he actually did something like this so it was, well, amazing. Tamari arrived on the scene as the both of them started to do some light sparring. Attacking one another, she used her fan as Naruto used his speed to get around it. The both of them end up close to each other as Naruto pinned her with a kunai. Something happened at that moment there was a spark between them as their lips connected. They shared their first kiss. As Naruto was a bit embarrassed that he just did that, he apologized but she told him that she should not. She liked him. But Naruto didn't want to be the guy that hold her back. She was a princess for God's sake, the princess of the sand. And she was very beneficial towards her village. However, she told him that she didn't want to hear that. She liked him and he liked her as well. She wanted to be with him, no one else but him. As they shared another kiss, they made out like that for a long while before they walked back, hand in hand back to the village, people seeing them. Some were not surprised seeing that they were hanging out a lot lately, but some were, and some were jealous. As Naruto had gotten back in shape, everything about him had changed up his clothing, and several girls had, well, found his whisker marks to be rather cute, as Tamari had to glare at them whenever they tried to approach to try to flirt with him, and Naruto was too nice to, well, say anything bad or even rush them off, so Tamari had to be the one to rush them away. So with that they got back to the house as he spoke about, well what this was. The both of them were all willing to be together as the both of them knew that they had feelings for one another. So with that, they went to sleep the next morning, Naruto made her breakfast as they talked. As they told Gara and Conqueror about this, neither of them were surprised as Conqueror had to make a joke causing Tamar to beat the crap out of him as Naruto plotted a date for the both of them as they had not really been on a date. Sometime later Naruto brought her towards a location. She was shocked as Naruto had actually helped create this place given that they were in the desert and this place was a place with water and well cool breeze and air at the daytime. Naruto had tried to perform the summoning technique seeing that the whole debacle with Jiraiya but seeing that he was no longer under the toad contract Naruto got sent to the tigers. Tiger summons. Naruto was able to prove himself to the boss tiger who can shrink himself down as he had made Naruto his summoner and this was a place for them as they could not be that far away from their summoner one and only that is. As Naruto saw a lot of baby tiger cubs Temari saw them as well. They were so cute. As one of them were Naruto partners is familiar if you would say 
as the Boatim and Timar had their date. Three years passed by rather quickly as we begin at Kanoka. Snadi was pretty pissed off as she was called for another meeting. Ever since Naruto had been banned, she became cold towards the people, especially the members of the council. Yes, extremely cold. As they want to discuss the relationship that they once had between the spring and the wave. The spring and wave came for their three year renewal, but they declined to go through with another this time. Separating from Kanoha, they'd also make ties with the Hidden San. Not to mention the Hidden San now had a barrier that was better than Kanoha's, and their phone due to tags had gotten a lot better. Something was going on. Gar was coming to the village very soon, so Sinadi would try to find out. As the members were trying to get better, seeing that the sand was rising, but Sinadi said that she will try and find a peaceful way, as she would not allow them doing things stupid. Skipping towards the barbecue shack, a lot has happened with the rookies. For one thing, Sinadi refused to train soccer. Yes, she outright refused. As Naruto was banished from the village, Sinadi wanted nothing to do with majority of the people that was a part of this banishment for him. So she refused to train soccer. Kakashi had been forced to train Sasuke to make him grow stronger. And Sasuke had cut off all the rookies. He said that they were just holding him back. Not to mention, both Sakura and Sasuke had a talk. No one was sure what happened between them, but after that talk, Sakura stopped fascinating over Sasuke and she started to feel regret for what she did to Naruto. She started to feel so much regret, even the others. They were all stressed. Shikamaru was stressed after the mission, and he took his anger out on the blonde. None of them had any idea if he was even alive, as majority of them believed that he was dead, as there was no news, nothing on him at all. And that was greatly saddened because they would never be able to apologize. Unaware that Naruto was indeed alive and they will be seeing him very soon. So yeah guys, basically that's what we left off you guys again. Switch across the playstation for yourself. So what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Begin now guys. We begin this episode at the Hidden Sand. It was a bright and hot day within the village as usual. As Tamari walked through the village in her usual attire. Her purple battle kimono with the both sides slit, showing her thighs, one of which had fishnet covering it, with her other calf doing the same, and was wearing anvil armor, with a scarlet sash on her waist, as she was walking towards the weapon shop to get her fan back after maintenance, when she felt two arms embrace her from behind. As she felt a kiss on her neck, she leaned back into the person that she loved so much. So where are you going, Heim? As she turned around in his embrace, she wrapped her arms around his neck as she softly pressed her lips against his, not caring in the slightest that they were in public. As she broke the gentle kiss, as he straightened up, showing that he was much taller than her. There he stood, Naruto Uzumaki, at six foot, taller than her by four inches. As his hair had grown out, just a bit though it stopped right at his shoulders, as a few bangs came down in his face. His eyes almost seemed completely shadowed, giving him a rather mysterious look. He was wearing grey pants, a grey shirt with a coat over it, with blue flames on the bottom of said coat, fingerless gloves with metal plating on the back, his kunai pouch on his waist, one behind and underneath his coat as well. Tamar pressed herself against him as Naruto, disappearing a water sun shin, the both of them vanishing, appearing on top of a small hill. Naruto set her on his lap. As he leaned into her, You miss me, Haim, said Naruto. You were supposed to come back last night, she said, and here you are coming back, half a day late, she said in a mock, angry tone. Naruto placed a kiss on the top of her head. I'm sorry, Haim, he said. There was a problem in the barrier, and I had to go and check it out. Some idiot was trying to improve it, but instead, ruin the stability of the seals. Besides, I came here first, without even reporting the success to Gara, said Naruto chuckling, rubbing the back of his head. Well, you did the right thing, she said. I have to go to Gara too, so let's go together. Before that though, said Naruto as he leaned in, as their lips connected, sharing a deep, very very deep passionate kiss. When they pulled back, her cheeks were flushed and red. As Naruto reached up and tuck, a lock of hair behind her ears, giving her a smile. Time skip. Kazagaga's tower. Gara was frustrated. 
an idiot. Try to show his sealing prowess in modifying the barrier and he accidentally disabled it. The council was in uproar. At least every 10 minutes, someone was sent here to ask him if the matter had been resolved. He sent Naruto to deal with it since he was the one that built it from the ground up. But Naruto should have been here by now but he had not shown up yet. And this idiot in front of him was really ticking him off. Another message from the council. I will send a message as soon as Naruto is done. With the repairs, said Gara towards the member in front of him. Calmly hiding his frustration, the man thanked him and left. As there was a knock about three minutes after. Come in, he said. The door opened as Naruto and Tamari came in. As Gara noticed the lipstick on Naruto's neck. And seeing Tamari's face, he knew that the two were up to something. Uzumaki, he said, you were supposed to report in two hours ago, after you left the barrier team. I sent an Anvu team after you, but there has been no news. That is when the Anvu team arrived, Kazekagesama. It seems Naruto Uzumaki has left the village. We cannot find him. The leader paused, his eye twitching, rather violently, as he saw Naruto standing there, looking at him rather amused. Gar waved his hand as the Anvus vanished. Where were you, Uzumaki, he said. I have been answering those damn counts of fools for the past two hours about it, said Gar, rather irritated. Those members had truly pissed him off. He was annoyed as Naruto tapped his chin. Well, let's see. I was coming to you and I caught up with my Haim since we weren't able to meet up last night. And then we went to go and get our fan from the weapon shop. Then we got hungry, so I went to make us some lunch, and then we ate, and then, well, we had some alone time, said Naruto. As Gara I was twitching rather violently. So, you were doing all those things while you had an important report to come and report to me. You do know that reporting to your Kage is mandatory after a mission, right? Yes, so I've heard, said Naruto. Acting rather nonchalant. As Gara clenched his fist before he released a breath, calming himself, as Naruto looked towards him rather amused. The Uzumaki was just trying to piss him off or something, but Gara would not fall for that. I presume that the barrier problem has been fixed, knowing that Naruto would have reported back if something went wrong. Gara was not really worried about the barrier being fixed. Of course, said Naruto, I told you I would get it done. As Gara nodded before he turned towards Temari. I am sorry, but there's a mission of negotiations that you will have to do that you will not like. She was confused. You will have to come with me to Kanoha for the final negotiations of the peace treaty. You are the best negotiator that we have. Given your knowledge of politics is unparalleled and has shown in the last two negotiations in our alliance. Said Gara, anger quickly sparking her eyes hearing about that village. However, Naruto placed a hand on her shoulder. Haim, he said. Don't let your personal feelings come between it. What in the past is done? This is about the village and plus. Naruto turned towards Gar. It's only a one-time deal, right? But Gar did not answer. Well, she has also been appointed to be the liaison between the San and Kanoha for the upcoming Chun exams. What? You, you can't be serious. Said Temari, looking towards Gar. Gara nodded. Serious. It is the order of your council and your Kagi. You cannot refuse this mission, he said. Furious. She walked away and slammed the door shut. Rather loudly. Gara said Naruto turning towards him. You shouldn't have forced her like that. We could have convinced her peacefully. Gara shook his head. No. It was the only way. Anyway, I want to take you as my personal bodyguard, but we cannot let you come to Kanoha. And all of us cannot be away. So I will be taking Konkuro. And while I'm gonna hand over my military powers to you. While the diplomatic powers are handed to the council. Gara said. Having complete trust and faith in Naruto. The whole council has already agreed to this decision. As Naruto was surprised. To give him military control of the Shinobi forces. Well that was temporarily him becoming Kagi. Until Gara returned. As Gara got up and placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder. Uzumaki, we both know that you've always been the strongest between the two of us and you have gained a lot of influential and respect amongst our council. Throughout the years with your contribution, 
by giving us your clan seals and forging alliances and your loyalty to me and this village still remain unquestionable. So let's see how you do as a temporary Kazakagi in my absence. As Naruto was still shocked by the whole thing, don't worry, you will only be in charge of Shinobis. The rest of the affair will be handled by the council and it's only for a few days. I know that you will do fine. You have never disappointed me and I know you won't this time, said Gara. Now, go and check on Tamari. You're the only one that can cool her down. In this moment, Gara said, patting his friend on the shoulder as Naruto nodded his head. As Naruto simply made his way off, he forgot all about the pressure of being a temporary Kage because he wanted to make sure that Tamari was okay. <laughs> his care for her was truly unquestionable. Gara thought to himself as he turned his gaze back towards his decks where he saw the thing that he hated the most. Paperwork. Time skip. As Naruto searched for Tamari, as he checked the estate, he also checked several places, but she was nowhere to be seen. As the sun was going down, Naruto started to get worried until it clicked in his brain. The place that he took her on their first date. As Naruto arrived and saw her sleeping, alongside Kira, Kira was Naruto's personal summon. The lion glanced up and saw him, as Naruto placed a finger to his lips. As the head of the lion went back down, as Naruto walked over towards Temari, he sat down beside her and placed her head on his lap as she wrapped her arms around him. As Naruto could understand why she was so upset and angry at the thought of even Gara suggesting that. As Naruto held her there, around an hour later Temari came too. Let me go, she said angrily as she saw Naruto. However, Naruto held on to her as he started to kiss her neck. I said, let me go. But he still continued, allowing her to lean into the touch. As Naruto whispered, I'm sorry, Haim, he said, holding on to her. If you didn't agree with me, at least, don't agree with him, said Tamari. I know, said Naruto, but it was an order from the council. You would have had to do it anyway, so I just tried to convince you. I wasn't going against you, said Naruto. I know, she said. I just got so angry, thinking about that stupid village. And I had to vent my anger, she said. I know, said Naruto. Tell me, do you love me, he said. She was surprised at this sudden question. But she answered without hesitation, more than you could ever know. Do you trust me, said Naruto. More than I trust myself, she said. Will you be with me, said Naruto. I am already yours, my ball of sunshine, she said. As Naruto smiled, hearing that, his hand then slipped into his pocket. As he pulled something out, it was a box. As Naruto cracked it open, then marry me. Timar snapped her gaze up, hearing that. As she saw what Naruto was holding in his arm, it was a platinum bang ring with a swirl with nine diamonds on top of it. The nine diamonds surrounded a red ruby in the center. It was crafted to the finest level of degree and perfect. Temari started to cry, tears of pure joy, as she nodded her head without a word covering her mouth. As Naruto took out the ring and placed it on her finger, the moment he was on she threw herself into him, holding on to him tight. And here I thought he would be happy to get the ring, said Naruto, making a joke, as she punched him in the chest softly. Shut up you idiot and just kiss me. As the both of them share a loving kiss that seemed to went on for hours but it was just a few seconds but to the both of them the love seemed to just stretch far beyond any of them could even imagine. What they had was beyond special something that the both of them sometimes couldn't comprehend how much they care for one another. As they broke apart and held on to each other as Naruto asked a question I'm do you think I propose a bit too early, he said, as he sounded a bit nervous. Well, that's a really interesting question to ask after you just propose. Why? Are you having doubts, she said to him. But she knew that was not the case. She knew what was the case though. No, of course not, said Naruto. It's just, you know, Konkuro told me that relationships, that couples first have, you know, sex, said Tamari. As Naruto nodded, making her giggle. Well, when have we ever been a normal couple? You and I had a full-on makeout session for my first kiss. And it was the most greatest kiss a girl could ever ask for. 
And then you took me on the most romantic date ever. And we spent the day talking. And I told you that I want to have a family with you. So just because we weren't ready to have sex doesn't mean anything. A relationship is just more than sex. And the things that you and I have shared. While sex is important in a relationship, my heart has never stopped fluttering over the past three years of being with you, she said. And besides, I told you that you can have me whenever you want. As Naruto blushed bright red, it made her giggle. You're too innocent for your own good, Naruto Kan, she said, and way too easy to tease as she kissed him on the nose. Oh, really now? I'm too easy to tease, said Naruto. As Naruto flipped her over, holding her hand down to the ground, as he started trail kisses down her neck, making her moan softly. He then pulled back. Now look who's too easy to tease. However, he saw a look on her face. What's wrong? Said Naruto, concerned. Is it because of what I told you a year ago? That is why we haven't taken that extra step yet. As Naruto knew exactly what she was talking about at the festival, flashback. Both Naruto and Tamara sat on the roof as they watched the fireworks go off ahead of them. As a festival was going on within the sand. Naruto kan. Yes, Haim, said Naruto. You know, I always had a dream that I have not told to anyone. Naruto glanced towards her. What is it, Haim? he said, as she laid her head on his shoulder. I always want to get married to a man that would love me, and my brothers would give me away on my wedding day. And on that night, the perfect night, the both of us will come together and be with each other for the first time. She whispered, as Nurta imagined him being the groom and spending the rest of his life with her. That's a beautiful dream, Heim, said Naruto, as he leaned and kissed her on the forehead. In the flashback, as Temari looked at him, feeling that she denied him of getting what he wanted because of her dream. A look of sadness in her eyes. Look at me, love, said Naruto, as she glanced back up towards him fully. You know I love you, right? said Naruto. As she nodded, do you know why I gave you that ring tonight? As he brought her hand up and kissed her hand. Because this ring, it's a promise, he said. That ring contained my Harishin marker, the fastest and the most sophisticated one I ever created. It took me a year to finish engraving such a complex seal into a small ring. Just channel a bit of your chakra in it, and I'll be there in a flash to get you. It also acts as a beacon due to a little bit of demonic chakra I put in it, allowing the center diamond to go, blood red, said Naruto. And no one can remove it except for you and me. As long as you have that ring, I'll always be with you. That ring is a pinnacle I have achieved with my ceiling. My masterpiece I created for my heim. No one has ever come so close to create such a complex seal and synchronizing them perfectly into such a small object. As long as that ring is with you, we are one, said Naruto. Timar could not even see the seals. If she looked at it normally, she had to squint and focus. As she looked up towards him, as tears of joy start to return once again. Sex does not matter to me, Haim, said Naruto. I would gladly die a virgin if it mean. I will have you in my arms. He whispered as she threw herself in his arms and cried, seeing how much she loved him. As Naruto held her on his lap, as she rested her head on his shoulder, let's go home. I'll make you some dinner, all right? She nodded as Naruto picked her up bridal style, as she wrapped her arms around his neck and snuggled into his chest. Now let me take you home in style, he said to her. You spoil me so much, she said to him. My princess deserves the best, said Naruto. Charmer. You don't have to flatter me anymore. I'm already your fiancé, she said to him, with a chuckle. Hey, fiancé, does have a sexy feel to it, you know? As she laughed. Well, wife, has a more sexier feel, she said, as Naruto leaped up, making his way with her. It does, said Naruto, and you'll be called that very soon, if I have anything to say about it. Timar hold on to him tight as Naruto moved. He was like a blur, as she squealed, feeling the wind, rushing across her face. Several people glanced up as they saw the blur, as they knew who it was. As they all knew of the unknown individual coming to the village, who won the heart of the Kazikage sister. 
the queen of the desert to Mari and melt in her heart to only him, seeing that she had never shown any interest towards any of the boys here within the Sen. As both Ruth and Timari arrived, Timar sat in his lap. As the other two were there, she did not even pay Gara a glance. Gara sighed Timari, for what it is worth, I do not want this any more than you do. But we have to think of the village. It's alright, she said. I understand Gara. Her voice was happy, even more so than when she spent time with Naruto. Like something monumental, something massive had happened. Are we missing something? Conqueror asks. As Gar wonders the same thing. As she raised her hand, guys, I'm engaged to my blonde Teddy here, she said. She said softly, pecking his cheek. A moment later, Gar broke out of his stupor as he smiled. A happy smile for the both of them. I'm happy, he said. And I approve of this engagement wholeheartedly. And I'm sure that the village would love to see their favorite couple together. They then turned towards Conkru as he was just staring at them before he fell over. Fainted. Huh. It seems like we broke him. Said Naruto with a laugh, causing the others to laugh as well. Gar then got serious. Naruto Uzumaki, he said, I trust you to keep my sister happy. Otherwise, friend or not, I will crush you with my sen. As Tamari blushed in embarrassment, as Naruto chuckled, he placed a hand on Gara's shoulder. Don't worry, Gara, he said. You know how much I love her. As Gara extended his hand towards Naruto. As this is a sign of trust and fate. Seeing that Gara was not one to get so closely touched to people, but he saw Naruto as one of his brothers. As he took his hand and they shook hands. As Naruto decided to make his way towards the kitchen, Tamari following behind him. As she was like glued to him right now, she then picked up on something a scent. What's that smell? She said. Oh, it wouldn't happen to be the cinnamon pie or chocolate truffle cake that I put in the oven, now is it? As she looked at him, are you trying to make me fat, mister? She said. She asked in mock anger as Naruto picked her up and placed her on the counter. Now that I think about it, a fat and chubby Marichan would look so adorable and cute. Of course, yes, I'm trying to make you fat, said Naruto. Then I'll have more of you to kiss you, said Naruto. She wrapped her legs around him, holding him one place, as she placed her forehead against his. You're lucky you're so good with flattering, she said. You always know how to get away with these things. After all, you're the only one who can say that you want me fat and don't get my fan over your head. As Naruto chuckled and poked her stomach, causing her to giggle, she truly let her guard down with him. Well, that is what happened when you're in love, after all. The next morning as Tamari was getting ready. So, why aren't you coming with us again, she said. I mean, Gara trusts you, she said. And I thought you would be a choice even if we were going to Kanoha. We could have gotten you on Boo Mass. As she brushed her hair and started tight. Well, Gara didn't want to leave the village weak and unguarded with all of us gone. That is why. He hand over the military power of the village to me, said Naruto, while the council will handle the other matters. Tamara paused as she turned towards him. And why didn't you tell me this earlier, she said. Because Gara told me after you left yesterday, and I was so worried about you. Well, it kind of slipped my mind. And then we had our moments, and I forgot. As he chuckled and rubbed back of his head, Tamara shook her head and sighed. The idiot forgot that he was temporary Kage because... He was worried about her. He really is an idiot. However, he's my idiot, she thought to herself. As Naruto came behind her and helped her tie her sash, before kissing her in the neck, as she spun her own in his grasp, before she planted one on his lips. As they broke apart, I'm afraid one more kiss like that, and I wouldn't be able to go downstairs in the condition that I would be in, said Naruto, making her laugh and punch him on the chest slightly. As the both of them made their way downstairs, as they arrived to see Gara and Konkuru, as they all gave each other a nod before they made their way towards the gate, as Naruto was holding her as she rested her head on his shoulder while one of her arms were wrapped around his, as they reached the gate to see the Anbu commander, the Jonin commander, and the council waiting for them, as Naruto figured that they were here to see Gara off, as Tamara let Naruto go with a loving smile, as she would miss him even though 
it wouldn't be for that long. However, Naruto decided to make a spectacle as he grabbed her hand and pulled her back towards him in a twirl before he planted a wet one right on her lips. Everyone blushed and looked away as when they broke apart, Temari had a big smile on her face as Naruto brought her hand up where the ring was. Remember, if you ever need me, I'll be there in a flash, he said. As Gaara coughed in his hand, causing them all to look up as Lady Chiyo and Ebiso walk up to them. As he nodded towards them, Honorable Elders, Gaara said, Would you do the honors? Naruto was confused until they pulled out a hat with a kanji for wing on it. Temari, eyes widened. As Naruto looked at them, Naruto was a maki. The fifth Kazakage Gaara of the desert has named you his temporary replacement until he returned. Do you accept to protect this village in his stead with your life? Yes, said Naruto as he lowered his head as Chiyo placed a hat on his head. Then you are named the Kazakage of the Hidden Sand until the fifth Kazakage returns. All safe for Lord Kazakage. As Naruto watches they all said Kazakage Sama in unison. He blinked in surprise, never thinking that he would ever experience something like this, being a leader even though it was temporary. As they were all about to take a knee, Temari included but Naruto stopped her. No, you are my partner in everything, said Naruto. You don't have to bow to me, even if I'm the Kazakageheim, said Naruto. Neither should any of you, he said. Respect is earned and not force. Kneel to me, when I've truly done something honorable for the village. As several of them got smiles on their faces, his words just caused their respect to increase by a lot. As Temar smiled at him before she stepped back towards the side of her brothers, as Gara extended a hand towards Naruto, take care of the village in my stead, Kazekage Dano, he said. Do not worry, said Naruto, as long as I draw breath, no harm shall befall this village. You have my word. Ha! Huh. The wind had looked better on you, Blondie, said Konkuru. Only for Temar to whack him over the head. He's a Kazakage, you idiot. Show some respect. What? But he said we didn't. Temar raised her fist, causing Conqueror to flinch away. As Naruto laughed, causing the others to join in as well. You all take care of yourself now, said Naruto. As they all gave him a nod before they depart towards their destination, which was none other than the Hidden Leaf. Unaware of the schemes and the things the Hidden Leaf has cooked up. Well, the schemes that the people in the shadow has cooked up. Time skip. After three days of traveling, they arrived towards the village, where Sinade was waiting for them, along with a team of Anvu behind her. As they stopped in front of her, Sinade smiled at the three of them, as they gazed at her neutrally. Welcome, Kazakagidano. It's been a while. I hope the trip was peaceful. It was fine, he said with a nod. And it has indeed been a long time, he said. As they walked towards the Hokage's tower, with the villagers going about their daily business. Well, would you like to rest at the Leaf Dragon for today and start the talks tomorrow, Kazakage Dano, said Snevi. However, Gara shook his head. No, we are well rested from the previous night and the whole day is free. Plus, I want to get back as soon as possible. Snevi was confused by the hurry. She also noticed that Temari seemed to be uncomfortable. As Snevi nodded, so Temari, you must want to meet your friends after all this time. I remember you meeting a lot of them when you acted as our liaison for the first year. She said with a smile, however, Temari showed no signs of happiness. No, not really, she said. Snethi was confused by the tension, as she didn't understand. The rest of the trip was made in silence. Moments later, Hokage's tower arriving in said office. The three elders arrived as well, as he greeted them with a smile. Welcome, Kazakage Dano. I was thinking that we should discuss some of the finer points of our alliance before we go into the council chambers. It will allow us to save some precious time. Gara nodded, not seeing the problem. Kazakage Dano, firstly, I must say that Elif really appraised their newfound quality of sealing, equipment, and the new and strong way that you hold the village so strongly in front of the world, under your reign, for a newly appointed Kazakage and one so young. It is truly impressive, said Homura. Timari and Gara saw exactly where this was going, as Gara decided to entertain them a bit. Yes, well Timari came across a prodigy that was not allied to any village, and he was already well versed in the shinobi arts. So we allow him to join our village. He impressed us from day one, 
going through the ranks and gaining respect. He is one of my most trusted shinobis. I can say even in a battle he would best me. And he's become a very close confidant, a part of the family Sagara. And his expertise lie in the art of sealing. He is a true prodigy in the art. He has provided us with new ones and pushed our existing ones beyond the limit of perfection. Even as of this moment as I speak, I have named him my temporary replacement until I return to the village with complete backing from the council. They were all shocked upon hearing that. For him finding a wild prodigy out there roaming and for them to trust him that much for making him the temporary Kagi until they return. The boy must have some undying loyalty and must be a true prodigy as well. Who is the shinobi that you speak so highly of? He must be something special to do so much for the village in such a short time. Say Danzo. Oh he's something alright Timari thought. Roaming her thumb over the ring that she had on her finger. Snavin noticed a slight blush in her face. It seems like she has a crush on this mysterious shinobi Snavi thought herself. As Gara spoke up. I don't see this being important to our talk of alliance he said. It seems like we're getting off topic. The elders did not like that as they wanted to know who was this masterful ceiling art member. However Gara had slipped away from their little discussion rather skillfully. Snadi decided to go right for it. You're right Kazukage Dano. Let us get on with the talks. As Homura started up. Kazukage Dano or a village has been all comrades in arms. And the invasion was just a ploy by our common enemy plotted so we hold no grudges. Gara nodded gratefully that his father's mistakes were a thing of the past right now. So we have found a really nice and old custom use for holding strong bonds and relationship between allies that has been with us for a generation now. Gara looked at him curiously as Donzo was the one that continued. A political marriage. As Gara thought about it for a moment, Tamara thinking the same thing. It has been done several times in the past to strengthen ties between villages. Her father also spoke to her about that in the past, that one day she might have to go through with it. Luckily for her, she already find the person she wants to spend the rest of her life with. Yes, I can see the point in that, though there must be people of great importance from both sides, and I don't think a girl from the Leaf will be willing to sit down with me, so I guess I wasn't your choice, he said. Causing him to nod at his assessment as he nodded back. Well, then who did you have in mind? The elders turned towards Snavi. She flared her chakra in a certain pattern, causing her Anvu to arrive with none other than Sasuke. Gara raised her eyebrow towards Snavi, confused why the Uchiha was calling such an important talk. I'm sorry but I thought we were having important political talks. So why is he here? Well Kazukagi Dano, as I'm sure you already know this is Sasuke Uchiha. The most promising upcoming joining that we have. And the last Uchiha of our village, Koharu said. Gara asks, he's your most promising upcoming joining. Hokage Dano, he said. Why? Is there something wrong with that, Sasuke said. Gara turned towards him. The look in the Kazakage eyes were rather off-putting. I would suggest that you teach your promising upcoming joining manners. To talk to the Kazakage of the sun and remind him that... He might be the last Uchiha but I am the Kazakagi, and he must remember the ranks, carefully said Gara. Snavi gave Gara an apologetic nod, as she then glanced up towards Uchiha. Sasuke Uchiha, be quiet she said. You were called here for a reason, do not speak unless you are spoken to. Am I clear? Sasuke nodded with a grunt, as Snavi turned back to Gara. I apologize for his behavior, I assure you, he didn't mean anything by it. As Gara nodded towards her, I am still surprised though. The last time I was here, there was a lot of promising people. So for you to tell me that he's your most promising upcoming Joni, said Gara, as Snavi did not say anything, knowing that if he was here, he would have been a lot stronger by now and Sasuke would not stand a chance against him. But she knew that she couldn't think about him right now, that would just bring back too many bad memories. As Sasuke decided to speak up, I am a born elite Uchiha. My strength far exceeds my age and with my title. Do you believe your village has anything better than me? As Snavi looked towards Sasuke, she told him not to say anything. However, Gar responded back towards Uchiha. Actually, yes. Our most promising Jonin is stronger than I am. And given that the both of you are similar to age, 
And not to mention, at the moment he's temporary Kazukagi while I'm gone. Sasuke clenches fists at hearing that. Despite not being in the sand, Sasuke believed that he was greater than anyone around his age group. Greater than even older generation elites. That is how far he has come. So for Gara to say that, well, it truly pissed him off. Really? So this talented shinobi is that young? Said Donzo, trying to gain some more information on this mysterious shinobi. However, Gara simply nodded, not saying a word about it. Pissing Danzo off, but he kept it inside. So coming back to our talks, Kazakage Dano, we possess a political marriage between Sasuke Uchiha from our village as a groom. Seeing his talents and bloodline are well known and respected and hold a lot of influence in our village. Plus, he's a personal apprentice to our elite Jonin, Kakashi Hatake. So, I suppose that we are to send a bride, and I'm guessing since he wants to rebuild his clan, if I know him right. Unless, said Gara, not finishing his sentence, however, they knew what he was implying. As Sasuke growled, I'm not gay, he said. Why, yes, of course, said Gara. I'm sure that you've already had a bride in mind from our side. Or, unless, you want me to go through some files, he asks. However, they shoot their heads, no. They already have someone on mine. There are no need for that. We have already thought about it and not to mention spoken to Sasuke about this. And he's also agreed as well. Said Kaharu, Gara motioned for her to go on. We have decided for a marriage between Sasuke Uchiha of the Leaf and Temari of the Sand. As Sasuke started to glance towards Temari, Gara looked at them, his face completely blank and impassive. Temari wanted to turn and slap Sasuke across the face the way he was looking at her with those eyes of his. She is directly related to you and the Fort Kazakagi as well. And one of your top Konoichi, both of them has high standings in both our village and it will help for a solid, great alliance. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Gara said. So I suggest you think of something else. Temari remained quiet as she did not say anything. What? But how can you refuse such a great proposal, Kazakage Dano? We have offered the hands of such a great shinobi and alas, of one of our noble clan. And he too want a strong Konoichi like her in marriage. So what is the problem? said Homura, shocked that the Kazakage rejected their offer. As Temari spoke up, it's because I am already engaged. Their eyes widened as Temari held up her hand. Snevin narrowed her eyes at the design of the ring, but she did not say anything though. As Koharu spoke up, surely it could be reconsidered. After all, it's for the good of the village and relations can be broken off. I mean Sasuke is also an eligible candidate as well. The more they talked, the angrier Gara got, and he wanted to rip Sasuke apart for the way he was looking at his sister, as he was doing it so blatantly, making Gara get really pissed off. Give me a day to consider it. We will speak about this tomorrow. I am tired now, so we shall go through what you proposed earlier and take the council meeting tomorrow. As the group nodded, thinking that Gara was actually going to think it over. There was no way that he could pass up on something like this, the elders thought to themselves as Snadi had remained quiet not saying anything. She was just looking at the hand of Temari and the ring, the design to be exact. Yes, of course, said Snadi, speaking up. Take all the time you need. We shall discuss this tomorrow. As the group made their way towards the hotel, once they arrived there, Temari swing her fan right towards Gara. However, his San came up and blocked it. You think I would ever break my engagement off to Naruto to ever be married to that smug bastard Uchiha? Calm down, Temari, said Gara. I am not considering anything. You will not be married to anyone but Usamaki, as long as I breathe. Temari anger died down as she looked at him. Then why did you tell them that you would consider it and not outright refuse it? As Gara pinched a bridge of his nose, he had no idea how Naruto kept her so controlled while she was so impulsive without him. As he sighed to himself, outright rejecting such a great proposal without even considering it will send the wrong message to them. She was about to say something but he got her off. And if I had stayed in that room five more minutes with that bastard, I knew like that, there would have been only one Uchiha left alive in the elemental nation. And trust me, I'm not talking about the loyal one to the leaf. Hearing that her anger completely vanished, as she smiled at him. Thank you, Gara, she said. Conqueror then spoke up. They are pretty interested in our new mysterious ninja. Huh. And they have no idea who it is. I wonder, 
What is he doing right now? Sid conquered to himself. As Tamari was already missing root hugs and kisses. As Gar had a look of murk on his face. I bet he must be cursing at me right now for leaving him with the paperwork. Back in the sand, a sneeze could be heard in the office as Naruto blinked and looked up. I guess my heim must be missing me, Naruto thought, as he then lowered his head and returned back to sleeping. Gar didn't know why but he just got the impulse to hunt down Naruto Uzumaki and hurt him badly, but he didn't know why. I bet he must be missing all those makeout sessions with Temari, said Konkuru. Temari turned towards him. He knew that when he said these things it caused her to attack him but he couldn't help but see the look on her face as he ran to the bathroom. Meanwhile, in River Country, in a cave, there was a statue with fingers that were pointed upwards. There was nine figures that stood on it. Seven of them were a projection while the other two was real. Sorcery, what news have you gotten on the sand? The leader, his eyes was purple with rings in it as they seemed to hold this power that just capture your gaze. He was talking to a hunch over figure wearing their casket clothing. The sand has upgraded their defenses and it has been really hard to get in touch with my informant on the inside. However, a few days ago, he was able to create a hole in the barrier and I was able to get some information before it was repaired. The leader simply waited for him to continue. I was told that the Ichibai Jinjuliki has gone to a leaf to speak to the Hokage about their alliance, leaving the Kyubi Jinjuliki alone within the village. The leader nodded, that is great news. It will also help in the capture of the Kyubi Jinjuliki. Kisame then spoke up, hey, wouldn't it be easier to capture the One Tails now that he's alone? It catches sight at his impulsive partner as he spoke. Kisame, with him being outside the village, he can battle without any restrictions and it will be difficult to capture him alive if he releases Shikaku. The Kyubi Jinjuliki is alone inside the village without the Kazakagi. To back him up, this can provide a great opportunity to provide distraction in order to capture him, thus leaving the one tailed Jinjuliki alone for easier capture in the future. Well, now that you say it that way, it does make sense, said Kisame. Yes, Itachi, you're correct in your assess of the situation. Plus, extracting the Kyubi will take a long time and holding him down while we capture the Ichibai will be difficult, so we will take this chance. Sorcery, do you have an estimation of his skills? Sorcery nodded. I wasn't able to get a lot since most of his files are kept classified, but he's a Jonin within the village. He has wind and water as his mastery elemental affinities that he showed to pass the Jonin tests. His Genjutsu skills were not mentioned, but it's safe to say that he can only dispel them given his reserves as a Jinjuliki. As Itachi spoke up, then it would be good if Deira and Sorcery went to capture him. The leader looked at him. And why would you say that Itachi he asks. Kisame used water jutsus making it difficult for him to fight within the sand. And he has good taijutsu skills so it's safe to say that he can hold out against Samihata without using ninjutsu. Because he knows his specialty from the last time that we went to capture him. I am a primary genjutsu user with good skills in other fields. But I'm not a powerhouse to provide a good distraction. Daedra with his explosion release can create nice distractions and will be able to counter his wind release. With his blasts and his water release will be weakened in the desert so that will not be a problem. And the both of them are long range fighters that will make the Kayubi Jinjulki skills useless. Not to mention they are closer to the village at this time. As the leader nodded, excellently put Itachi, your deduction skills are on point as usual. Dater a sorcery, travel to the sand and retrieve the Kyubi Jinjuliki. We shall start with the weakest village and the strongest of the Bijus. Sorcery nodded, it shall be done. Yeah, we'll bring him here alive, said Dater. Despite what has been said, do not get overconfident. He is the Jinjuliki of the Nine Tails after all. As Kisa may laugh at that. Oh come on, I know it's been three years but last time we saw him, he wore all orange. And he only knew the Shadow Clone Jutsu. I mean how tough could he have gotten in just 3 years? I bet even Daedra alone can take him down with those stupid clay toys of his. Daedra fume hearing that, hey, don't disrespect my art, he yelled. After all, my art is an explosion. Art is eternal, something that never disappear. Not something instantaneous, said Sorcery. As Daedra was about to blow up at him until 
The leader spoke up. Alright, that's enough. Go and retrieve the cabbage in Julke. Dismiss. With that, all of them flicker away. Time skip. Kanoha. At leaf. Dragon Hotel. When Tamara woke up, she was hugging onto the pillow as she frowned. She really missed her blonde. It was early. She decided to take a walk until negotiations began at noon. As she saw that Gar and Conquer were just waking up, her brother had been able to sleep ever since. Nur to place a demon suppression seal over his weakened three symbol seal and had effectively cut off all communication with Shikaku until Gar decided to speak to it himself. As they had forgotten to tell Conquer that Gar was able to sleep on the first day, when he had came inside he had started to freak out. As the two of them had just burst out laughing seeing how much he was freaked out. As he was seriously gonna lose it wondering why they were laughing, seeing that Gar was sleeping because he knew from bad memories what happened when Gara slept. But they eventually told him though as he calmed down. Gara told her to be careful as she was going out within the village. She told the both of them what Naruto did to the ring. Gara was not surprised. He's still way in the sand and yet he's closer to her than anyone else. He figured that Naruto would do something like this, conquer only chuckling as he should figure that out by now. At the moment though Tamara was walking through the village, she really just wanted to head back home. Well, to see Naruto. As she was getting hungry, and she then remembered the place that he always eat at, and spoke to her about the only people that let him eat peacefully even if he did not have the money. As she arrived, hey, are you guys open? Toki turned towards the surprise that someone came so early for ramen. Yep, he said, we're always open. Huh. He chuckled to himself. What's so funny, she asked. It's just an old habit, he said, for us to open so early. After all, there's a customer that always come here early in the morning. And I know that he'll return one day. Are you talking about Naruto? I am Kimaron. You knew Naruto? Yeah, said Tamari. Were you guys close? She asked. He's like a little brother to me, I am said. He would always come here early in the morning with that goofy grin on his face. The only person I know that can eat so much ramen in the morning. I miss him greatly, she said. We're still waiting for him, said Toki. As Tamari turned towards him. Those idiots might believe that he's dead, but I know that he's out there alive. And I know that he won't die. He will be back here soon. Ordering 50 bowls of the Naruto special, said Toki, a proud smile on his face. Ayam smiled to see how much these people care about Naruto. As she ordered one Naruto special, the more she hear them talk, the more she wants to tell them that Naruto was okay. Because despite everything, despite how much years has passed, these people still care for him deeply. You know, she said. The San has this one fellow customer who has a really good tongue for ramen, but the San doesn't have that taste that he's looking for, and he talks about it a lot. You know, I bet he would love to see you guys within the San. And this spot will gather a lot of tourists, after all. Your ramen's amazing, I am said. Before they could refuse, she spoke up. He can eat ramen all day and night, and all he talks about is how these two wonderful people. A loving old man and his daughter feed him ramen even when he didn't have the money to pay for it. If you would please consider my offer, I would take care of everything to get you settled within the village. As she gave them a scroll with details how to contact her, as the both of them were quickly able to realize what she was saying. Father, he's... I am said looking towards Tuki. I knew it, Tuki said. Those idiots don't have what it takes to take my boy Nuta down. I have made him strong with my legendary ramen skills. He said proudly with tears as Ion giggled at his stupid answer. Looks like I will have to move to the sand, considering that that one mysterious customer could make up for my sales by himself. Ion thought about the change in scenery, and one thing she hated was how the people of this village celebrated when Naruto was banished. That had truly angered her to the point of no return. It was the villagers, as the both of them wiped down the stand. Thinking about Naruto. As for Tamar, she made her way towards one of the training ground. As she was testing out a few things with her fan, just loosening up her muscles when she felt someone watching her. He was in the trees. Tamar gripped her fan as she spun around, wind style. Wind side jutsu, she said, sending a volley off. Sharp spears of wind right toward the tree foliage. The person jumped out as he landed with an amused look on his face. To reveal that it was none other than Sasuke Uchiha. She narrowed her eyes at him dangerously. 
Sasuke crossed his arms over his chest as he looked her up and down. I've been looking for you, he said. As Temar glared at him. And why, per se, have you been looking for me, she asked. As Sasuke confidently walked towards her. A humorful smirk on his face. But guys, be and subscribe right here. If you want to see next part and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification they posted. Remember to share all of your friends on your social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. Yes, I need a fourth them guys, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and become a part of the Inmaking family. So, yeah, without further ado, I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.